Hi everyone, I'm Nina Dunninger from the University of Würzburg in Germany. I present my and my co-authors work on the topic Virtual Body Swapping, a VR-based approach to embodied third-person self-processing and mind-body therapy. My co-authors are David Mahl, Sebastian Kepler, Erik Wolf, Mario Botsch, Johann Habakuk Israel, Mark erich Latoschik and Karolin Wienrich. Before I start with the presentation of our research, let me ask you one question. If you were to leave your body behind, whom would you trust to step in for you in owning and controlling it? And who else would you want to be? Perspective shifts are frequently used in therapeutic scenarios. Patients create distance to themselves by taking on a different perspective in imagination or during role-playing with others. In doing so, they shift from a negative towards a more positive self-image. VR takes these methods to a new level by allowing users to meet themselves in an immersive 3D environment, allowing for virtual self-encounters and swapping between perspectives. But what are the effects of a virtual body swap? To analyze possible moderators in psychotherapeutic interventions, Britain and colleagues presented a framework for what they called self-related processes, which might function as moderators or mediators in therapeutic success. They categorize self-related processes into conceptual processes, including self-evaluation or self-criticism, and more body-oriented embodied self-processes. The, the latter include sensations such as the sense of ownership and agency over one's body, or a sense of self-location. One measure that is particularly associated with modern psychotherapy is interoception, or interoceptive awareness, the core perception of internal body signals. Interoceptive awareness is associated with reduced eating disorder symptoms, pain and fatigue, suicidality and depression and anxiety. There have been some studies that explored the possibility of a virtual body swap. In 2020, for example, Landau proposed a system in which users meet the person they were five minutes ago to perform a self-compassion exercise. Seboya and colleagues presented a system where participants got to embody another person while seeing their own body again in a self-compassion task. Falconer and colleagues took a step into VR by allowing users to swap between an adult self and a child avatar. Finally, Slater and colleagues presented a system where users met their personalized avatar in VR in a self-counseling scenario. Regarding the processing of virtual bodies, most of these studies focused on the sense of embodiment towards the user's new avatar after the swap. They found that participants felt embodied in the experimenter, the self-avatar, or a virtual therapist. Regarding self-related processes, most of these studies focused on the conceptual self, finding effects on the user's self-compassion or self-counseling results. To complement these results, we investigate how participants perceived their personalized avatar after leaving it behind, and how they perceived their physical body in the sense of interoceptive awareness. We aim to answer the following research questions. First, does a body swap affect the sense of embodiment towards a personalized avatar? Second, do participants experience a sense of embodiment towards a non-personalized swap avatar while seeing their personalized avatar from an outside perspective? And third, does a virtual body swap affect interoceptive awareness? The system we used for our experiment includes two components. The first component is the avatar creation process. We use the body scanner of our embodiment lab, where we create personalized avatars based on a photogrammetry process, resulting in something like this. The second component of our system is the multi-user embodiment system. It allows two users, whether in the same or in a remote physical space, to embody separate avatars within the same virtual space. Our body swap interaction allows them to swap their avatars and perspectives at wish. We implemented a handshake gesture to initiate each body swap. A handshake is a symbol for consent and collaboration. Using this gesture, we could make sure that both partners consented into performing a body swap. For our evaluation, we tested a 1 by 2 between subjects design where 20 participants swapped their avatar with either a partner who was represented by an avatar 
or with a partner who did not have a visible virtual body. As visible swap avatars, we used a gender-matched avatar that was not familiar to the participants. This avatar was controlled by a human assistant experimenter who was not introduced to the participant before entering the virtual environment. In the invisible swap partner condition, we showed the par swap partner's controllers before the swap to allow for a visible handshake gesture. After the swap, the participants did not have any visible body or body parts in this condition. After giving consent and avatar creation, participants answered some pre-questionnaire, including a questionnaire on body awareness in daily life and a questionnaire on self-compassion. They then entered the virtual environment. In VR, participants first embodied their personalized avatar in front of a virtual mirror. Next, the second person was introduced as a compassionate friend and was shown either in their avatar or without it. Participants were instructed to shake hands with the swap partner to initiate the body swap. After that, they got a moment to adapt to the new situation and got some time in front of the virtual mirror to get accustomed to their new appearance. They then performed a guided meditation based on the compassionate friend meditation of Neff and colleagues. After that, participants initiated another body swap back into their personalized avatar and then left the virtual environment. We assessed the participants' sense of embodiment toward their personalized avatar directly before the second person appeared using the virtual embodiment questionnaire by Ruth and Latoshik which assesses virtual body ownership, agency over an avatar, and feeling changes in one's body scheme during embodiment. We additionally assessed the VEQ Plus questions by Fiedler and colleagues, who additionally include items for measuring perceived self-similarity, self-attribution, and self-location. After that, we assessed the user's interoceptive awareness, using the state mindfulness scale by Tanay and colleagues. We specifically focused on the items noticing of external body cues, noticing of internal body cues, body listening, attention regulation, and virtual attention. After the body swap, we again assessed the user's sense of embodiment towards their personalized avatar, and this time also towards the swap avatar. Again, we tested their interoceptive awareness. Comparing the pre- and post-measures of sense of embodiment regarding the personalized avatar, the results were as follows. We found a reduced sense of agency after the swap and a tendency regarding the perceived self-location, indicating a reduction in bottom-up processes of sense of embodiment. In addition to that, we found a reduction in self-similarity, but no reduction in other measures of self-identification, such as virtual body ownership change or self-attribution. This might be explained by the perspective change or by the longer time spent in the virtual environment, which might have reduced the initial feeling of similarity. Comparing the sense of embodiment toward the swap avatar and the sense of embodiment toward the personalized avatar both after the swap, we found that participants experienced a significantly lower virtual body ownership, self-similarity and self-attribution toward the swap avatar which they currently controlled, than toward the personalized avatar. However, regarding perceived agency, change and self-location, we did not find a difference between the two avatars. Regarding body awareness, we found that participants felt increased body listening and a shift of attention towards internal body signals instead of visual information after the swap. In addition to that, we found a positive relationship between virtual body ownership and agency towards the personalized avatar and body awareness. This outcome aligns with previous findings indicating a positive relationship between sense of embodiment and interoceptive awareness. Our pre-post results on interoceptive awareness, so our swap effect, contradict the assumption that embodying avatars might reduce interoceptive awareness due to distraction or increased workload. While our results do not answer all questions on the perception of virtual avatars and self-related processes in virtual body swapping, they offer some insights regarding the design space of a virtual body swap. The first being that the experience of a body swap can differ severely for each individual. With regard to the personalized avatar, our participants reported mixed feelings with some participants reporting eeriness, while others experienced awe-like feelings after the swap. 
To stimulate self-related processes, we see personalization as a possible opportunity. Participants highly identified with their avatar when placed outside of it. Creating similarities or deviations between participant and avatar could thus be an exciting tool to impact self-identification or self-related processing in body swapping. Controlling for possible uncanny valley effects, we see great potentials for future investigations into how changes in the appearance or behavior of an avatar affect self-perception. Regarding the design of our swap avatar, some of our participants reported it to feel like a brother or a good friend, while others reported feeling more comfortable in the swap avatar than in their own. With this in mind, the choice of our swap avatar's appearance may have impacted our results. We intentionally limited our swap avatars to humanoid photorealistic avatars. Expanding our findings considering swap avatars and familiarity could be a next step. Our participants differed in their preferences regarding who could embody and control their personalized avatar. Some mentioned allowing only a trusted person or no one. This raises the question of who might be a suitable partner behind the swap avatar. In our scenario, the swap partner was an assistant experimenter, sharing the physical space with the participant. This created some kind of co-embodiment situation in which subjects continued to feel associated with their personalized avatar, while another person could view and control it from first-person perspective. Since our participants expressed very individual preferences and fears toward the swap partner, future work should investigate how the swap partner affects the person's social and self-related processes. Before finishing my presentation, I want to point out some ethical concerns regarding working with personalized avatars and especially working with body swapping and personalized avatars. We tested with a sample of healthy participants who had consented into having their avatar controlled by another person. However, we still received some feedback by participants who were concerned by who might experience their personalized avatar from a first-person perspective. While a virtual body swap might not directly invade um, intimate space, such third-party embodiment scenarios could lead to a feeling of loss of control or of invasion into one's intimate or personal space. Thus, for future work, we plan to explore how body swaps might affect participants' feeling of comfort and how we can create a virtual safe space to avoid adverse emotions. Here's a list of the references used in this presentation. In summary, in our paper, we present a distributed body swap system allowing for real-time perspective switches. We contribute new insights into the sense of embodiment, virtual reality perspective taking and self-related processing. And finally, we discuss the design space and ethics of virtual self-encounters and body swapping. On behalf of my co-authors, I want to thank everyone for your attention.